This programme is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome to the Love Talk Show. Today we will talk about relationships before the altar and after the altar. When you get married, you experience different feelings. Happiness, expectation, anticipation, fear, insecurity, some positive, other negative ones. And I believe you and most couples who are not even married yet, but are already experimenting some of these problems caused by these emotions such as jealousy, difference of opinions, temper issues, and you might ask yourself, is it going to get worse after we got married? Our answer to you is yes. The problems you have before the wedding will probably get worse after you get married, because living under the same roof is not easy. But before you call your wedding off, there is a way to avoid all of this. Remember, one thing we always talk about here, love is not everything in a marriage. In order to have a long last relationship, we need to have more than just love between two people. And that's why we are here to help you. Just as people study hard before taking a job that requires specific knowledge, couples should do the same for their marriage. For you to maintain a happy and long-lasting relationship, you both need to take some steps that will make the bond stronger. Marriage was originally designed for you to spend the rest of your life with your partner till death do you part. However, divorce rates are getting higher, we all know that, and it is more common than it was in previous generations. In many cases, they do not have even the necessary information to establish a strong union. And you have uh, to choose your partner wisely. He or she has the potential of making your life either enjoyable or a total nightmare. So we are starting the show now with some topics that we want to suggest here to help you think about it and how we can contribute to make your relationship work. The first one is dating is try out for marriage. Anna, today um, we see people taking the dating period as a full commitment. Some people even make the, the tattoo of, of, of the girlfriend saying, oh, I found the love of my life. Uh, uh, I'm not criticizing people who do it. This is not criticism whatsoever, but then they don't even know each other, you know, for long enough. Sometimes it's just the, the following day after the person met the other for the first time and they are already making this um, I promise to love you for the rest of my life. It sounds very romantic, yes, it sounds very nice, it's very beautiful, you know, in the movies we see that and everything, but in real life it takes time for you to really realize that person is the love of your life. Yeah. It takes time, it takes communication. It takes going through things together. So the dating is a tryout. It's not already a signed commitment. Yes. It's a time that they should invest to know each other and let themselves to be known uh, with conversations, going out, but not just uh, to quality time to yes. learn from each other and to make sure that they want to continue that relationship to a marriage. Or not. Yeah, or, or not. not. It's, yes. it, 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 it's okay to find out, okay, this is not meant to be, yeah. even though we thought it was in the beginning. And okay, we see our goodbyes and, and that's fine. But dating is a trial period. It is not yet a full-time commitment, which leads us to the second topic. Why do you want to get married? Mm, <laughs> big one. Yeah, because many people, they, uh, they get married for the wrong reasons or for money, or they don't want to be alone, mm -hmm. or they, uh, they want just they to... They want to be happy. <laughs> yeah, to be happy. I want to get married 
so that I can be happy. In other words, I am putting all the burden of my happiness upon you. Yeah. You have to all be the someone yes, who, who make me happy. And if you don't, shame on shame you. On That's you. your fault. So it's not like this, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally, what intelligent love preaches is that people should be getting married to make someone happy. I'm gonna work to make someone happy. And before you say, oh, come on, Edward, that's absolutely, you know, crazy. No, it's not crazy. You know, this is what we've seen many successful couples do. They even, many who didn't start off that well, but at some point they realized that instead of working just to get what they wanted from the other, they started to give more. They started to work to make the other one happy. And even when the change didn't happen right away, Anna, it reciprocated. At some point in the relationship, the other person started giving too. And that's when you put your marriage in a very positive, powerful, virtuous cycle. Because you give and receive. And, right? and then the other person wants to give. And then it becomes a competition of who gives more. Uh, yes. <laughs> not of who, who you know, uh, um, wants more from the other, but actually who, you know, gives more to the other. Yes. And it doesn't stop. I give to you and in turn you, you please and me with this. And them uh, both make uh, both happy, right? Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> and now we have then the third topic we're going to talk about. The third topic is, can you two survive a lifetime together? Very important question. Yes. Yeah, you need to see if you are this person that you are having a relationship, you put up with their uh, manners, the way that they behave. Personality. Personalities. Uh, so many things that involve uh, character, which character. is very important. Yeah. Are you willing to, to uh, be for the rest of the, your life with that person? Yeah, because Anna, this is the thing. Um, I want already to completely demolish, we, we are completely against the idea that many people believe nowadays, and it's a misconception, that a man and a woman cannot possibly be, li I mean, live together for a lifetime and be happy. This is totally doable. We've seen many couples, you know, live a, a, a lifetime of, of, of joy with their problems and everything, yeah, but they learned, perfect, right, they, they learned how to work together. Yeah, right? how to work as a team and, and, and overcome problems together. But we need to see, for instance, if there is something in, in, in you that it would be completely unacceptable to me, and during the dating period, we go back to the first topic, the trial time, I just decide to turn a blind eye to that because I'm looking at other things. But, uh, you know, that particular trait of you is something that I cannot put up with. And then later on, we get married. And then at some point along the way, this side is going to show. Or vice versa. Yeah. It could be me towards you, right? So these things, that's, why the, important that's why the dating period is so important. Yeah. Because these things are supposed to be found out, raised up during the dating yeah, period. Before marriage. Right? Yes. This is, this is, there are issues that can be uh, worked out. Yes. Uh, there are issues that if they're not going to be resolved, it is going yeah. to be uh, uh, make the relationship unhealthy, impossible yes. to, to continue to survive. Yeah? Yes. Yes. The next one? The next one, marriage is not just a piece of paper. What do you think about that? <laughs> Absolutely right. Absolutely right. The marriage, even though it's a covenant, right? But it has to be something that is much more um, sacrificial, I would say, much more spontaneous. It has to do with giving. It has to do with working hard, especially at the beginning. Yeah, it's a lifetime commitment. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, with two people that they are uh, forming another family and many times involve kids, children. It's not a piece of paper. No, and listen, we've seen, probably uh, you also have seen those videos where there's some terrible accident like a car crash or something terrible happens and the car flips many, many times and it gets crushed and you say, my goodness, for sure, whoever was in that car got destroyed. And all of a sudden they come out of that vehicle walking. 
without a scratch, unscathed. And you can see, wow, you know, amazing. That can even happen, even though it's rare, but it happens in a car crash, but it doesn't happen in a marriage, Anna. No one comes out of a marriage unscathed. It brings hurt, it brings damage. damage. I'm not saying it's irreparable, mm -hmm. right? We believe that, uh, you know, things can be worked out, issues can be resolved. But definitely, it is going to bring damage. Yes, so it's definitely, a serious commitment. Yes, not it's, just... it's not just a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Something that has to be uh, not only assumed on the day and then put it on the you know cruise control because it's going to work. No, it has to be developed. It's going to take That's hard work it's from a both parts. Important decision to take before you go to to take this step for marriage. Absolutely huh? right. So the next topic we're going to talk about now, the next topic is, are you ready to put your partner first? Anna, your thoughts on this topic? Uh, once you get married, we are forming another family. But many times uh, people, uh, they want to keep the same relationship before with mom and dad and siblings uh, to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is, we see, that many problems you come with that. Yeah, it's gonna cause problems. Of course, no one is saying here we disconnect or, or we no. forget about the, the previous family. But people need to understand something. When you get married to someone, the day I got married to her, she became more important than my mother and my father and my sister. Because if this is not the way, then uh, this can bring a, an influence into the marriage that can cause problems. If the family is okay with, with, with the spouse, that's fine. Sometimes they are not. And then what am I going to do? Or when I should be giving you the attention, giving you the time, dedicating my efforts to make our relationship work, there I am putting out fires at, you know, home, you know, the other home, the previous home I, I used to live in. So understand this. When you get married, here you, you, you need to understand your partner has to come first. This is if you want to make your marriage work. This is very important, okay? The next stop is, is there anything you haven't shared? Yeah, very important to talk about this too, Anna, because even though we know we couldn't possibly share 100% everything, it's, it's probably too much, but at least if there is any serious issues, if there is an addiction, if there is anything about the past uh, that could create issues or, or that are, could create problems in the relationship, these things have to be addressed. Things of the past that are still affecting the person today, right? Uh, we heard of people who even didn't share that they were in another relationship, maybe in another country or something like this, and the other person didn't know. So listen, these things are very important. We need to share uh, what is important. We need to share any information that will affect the relationship. Uh, this cannot be kept private. It's important to have complete transparency when it comes to that, right? Yes. Because uh, imagine years after something that was not revealed, the person reveals after many years of marriage and it's like a betrayal. Why did you tell me that before? Yes. So... Uh, you said it all. The other person will feel betrayed. Yes. You didn't trust me to uh, share this yeah. information and with It's me. going to be already a problem. A yeah. big, a huge problem. And, and when there is no trust, there is no happiness, no, no peace. There will not be peace and happiness in a relationship. But what else the person is hiding? So we're going to always going to be at that question mark. Absolutely right. So we hope to have given you some things to think about, right? Peace of thought and to understand a relationship is something very, very serious, not to be taken lightly. Marriage is a blessing. Marriage is something amazing, but it has to be conducted through intelligent principles that will lead the relationship to that happiness. That is something extremely important. Now we are going for a quick break. And we will be right back.
Hello, dear viewer. We are here and we came in the middle of the break to tell you this. The best way for you to learn how to deal with your relationship problems, Anna, is to learn how to deal with... With ourselves. If you don't know how to deal with yourself, you don't know how to deal with others. That's right. That's why we have the Love Therapy. Every Thursday at 8 p.m. in Finsbury Park. 232 Seven Sisters Road, N4, 3NX, and also in some other locations. For more information, visit our website, lovetherapy.co.uk. See you there. See you. Welcome back. Now we will check a really nice chat we had with a beautiful couple. They shared their experience with us about how it was before and after they got married. Now we are here with a couple, lovely couple, David and Matilda. Thanks for coming to the Love Talk Show. No problem, our pleasure. Thank okay. you. So, uh, how long have you been married? Uh, one year and five months now. One year and five months. Yeah. So, we want to get a little bit of the story of you both. How did you meet? Uh, what caught your attention on each it? other? Yes. Uh, I remember we actually met through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. There was a person who I was quite close to, and he knew well, my wife now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know mm -hmm. what his intentions were, like how he was thinking, but he was thinking that maybe we could start a relationship in the future. But I was, I was oblivious to that. But as we kept speaking, you know, interest kind of grew. The more I heard about her, I thought, you know what, I'd like to get to know this person. And so it kind of developed from there. I didn't really know him as well. I'd only heard about him. But then a mutual friend as well, you know, one day came to tell me, oh, you know, there's this guy that, you know, could suit you. And, you know, his name is David. And I was like, oh. I'd, I'd seen him before. And I was like, oh, is it that David? No, I'm not really interested. <laughs> I'm not really interested. He's not my type. And so I thought, no, I'm not really interested. He's not for me. So I'm just going to leave it. Mm -hmm. But the person kept on talking about him. No, why don't you try? Why don't you give it a go? You know, it could really work. But the more they kept on talking, the more I was resistant. I was like, no, no, no. It's funny because we were both unaware that this friend of ours had this kind of... Uh, Agenda. This agenda, that's the, that's the word to mm -hmm. use. But um, when we did see each other, there wasn't really that attraction. Mm -hmm. like on, on my part, at least, mm -hmm. as my wife said as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't love at first sight. Oh, definitely not. Definitely. You know what? <laughs> Let, I, I want to take this point here to say something. We, me and Anna, we are not big believers in love at first sight. All right? To us, it's more like a myth. To be very plain and honest with you, in our case too, it wasn't love at first sight. Because a lot of people have this expectation that they see in the films and in the series that all of a sudden one bumps into another and everything begins to go in slow motion. Yeah. And you know, all of a sudden hearts begin to fly. Mm -hmm. But in most cases that I've seen, these are relationships that did not work. They started very strong, and just as strong as it started, and it just went down. Right. But interesting that in many cases, like our case, and now we're meeting a new case here, mm -hmm. when at first there was not an initial strong interest, an initial uh, infatuation or emotion, but all of a sudden, as they started to talk, as they started to get to know one another once again, using the head, not being led by the heart. Uh, many of these relationships, they have worked. So, I believe that at some point, as you were talking, at some point you were open to talk to one another. Yes. yes. It was pretty smooth. I think when, you, when, you're, when you're open to a new relationship, you, you have to have an open mind and think that maybe this could work, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's there to lose? Because to be honest, we didn't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try, see if it works out, and if it does, great. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. no problem, we move on. Mm -hmm. So we started to talk, and as we started to talk, we realized that we had a lot in common. Like you know, what? Our, our, Give us some of these, I wanna find out what started to ignite the attraction, yeah? Um, I think the fact that we were both passionate about what we did, mm -hmm. right, that was one of the, I think, the key factors. 
Um, the fact that we had quite a similar upbringing, okay, in terms of, you know, uh, where we schooled and the type of people we were around and the kind of things that we liked as well. I, I found out that she liked football. Mm -hmm. and, that, wow. and that for me was, uh, was <laughs> wow, <goal. laughs> that was a goal. So, mm -hmm. um, but it was just little things like this and we saw the fact that we, we got along and we enjoyed each other's company. And, and what got your attention yeah. towards David? And I think when I started speaking to him, I saw that there was someone who was very honest, very um, sincere and, you know, he'd express, because with people that I'd been with before, it was like, you know, what, when they were thinking something, I wouldn't know, but David was quite open to talking, and for me that was quite rare, because I'd never met, like, a guy that, yeah, don't like to talk, yeah right? but he was quite open to talking, and I was like, okay, this is good, and he listened, he listened as well, and I was like, okay, so, he's different. So, the period of dating between yeah. you two, how long, about how long did about it About two years? Two years, yeah, it was two a good years. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? I would like you to both to speak about the challenges okay. you went through, what were the challenges of this dating period? Okay. I think uh, one of the things that was a little bit difficult is the fact that because we, we both worked quite a lot, or we worked quite a lot at that time as well, um, just finding time to see each other. So sometimes we'll be restricted to maybe once a week or sometimes a few more times than that. But we try always to, to speak on the phone. But of course it would have been better if we could, uh, we could have uh, met up a, a few more times, I'd say. One of the um, difficulties was the fact that it's something that we even carried on when we got, that carried on when we got married, but when we'd have like a, a difficulty or something, he wanted to resolve it on the spot. Mm -hmm. But I always wanted to be left alone. Mm -hmm. And then he'd call, no, oh, let's talk. But I didn't, I didn't want to speak at the time, I wanted to, gather my thoughts, clear my head, and eventually speak. But David uh, is someone who he wants, when he wants to resolve something, he right wants away. to resolve it now. And so when we started dating and we'd have like arguments here and there, I started to see that. So at first, there was nothing special. Mm -hmm. Then you started talking, mm -hmm. right? It was a rational uh, decision mm -hmm. to talk, right? Whilst you were talking, the emotions, began to appear, right? You started yes. to like one another, uh -huh. right? So and then you got married. Yes. Right? And that's when the intimacy starts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why am I saying this? Because today in many relationships, and I believe this is one of the main reasons why relationships fail today, it's the other way around. Many people start already going to bed. They meet and on the same day they meet, they go to bed and sleep with one another. So it starts from the sex and then, you know, uh, some emotions appear, a strong attraction. They don't know each other yet. Very well. Yeah. Uh, this attraction may last, sometimes it lasts hours. And then as they get to finally use the head and get to know one another, they discover that their personalities are completely incompatible. Mm -hmm. they, they can't stand one another and it results in a breakup. So intelligent love starts with the head, goes down to the heart, and then the intimacy. It's, it's from top to bottom. And relationships that fail usually start from the bottom to the top. Yeah. Right? What was what were the differences you could say between the challenges you were facing mm -hmm. as a couple that was just dating to now a couple that is married, husband and wife? I'd say when you're dating is one thing. You see the person, you know, once in a while, you talk on the phone, but now you're married, you're together, you're seeing each other all the time, and then the things you didn't see when you were dating, you start to see now. So for instance, um, you know, when, when I'm cooking, I like my own space, I want to do my own thing. But then he likes to come and, no, I think you can do this, and I think you can do that, or, no, it's this way, and I get so angry, <laughs> like, no, this is my, this is my space, space, you know. But he'd want to come and, and so I'd find that very, you know, annoying and little things like that. Oh, why did you leave this on the floor? Pick it up. But do you communicate that to him? Do you say this to him? Couples need to find a balance. Sure. Yeah? We need to find a balance. Uh, I know that many people don't combine these two ideas, but marriage has a lot to do with business, with negotiating. You have to negotiate. How do you find this? There has to be 
a compromise where, okay, maybe I can learn something from his, mm -hmm. you know, cooking style. And you say, okay, you know, yeah. he needs a little bit of space too, because if I, I may come across as someone who is being too, uh, you know, too much interference on, it's like, you, you don't know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you don't know your business. You're not doing a good job mm -hmm. doing this. So we don't want to transmit. I know that this is not your, mm -hmm. your intention, but this is very important. We're talking about cooking, but this could be extended to finances, right? To decisions that are going to be made. Just communicate and have patience with each other. Yeah, of course. Right, right. But, but a very interesting case. Mm -hmm. And in your case, David, what were the big challenges or the um, big changes after the, the altar? One of the things that I realized, didn't realize quite when we were dating, um, is that the way we've grown up in terms of how we uh, deal with money mm -hmm. is very different. Right. right. Um, even though we went to similar kind of schools, mm -hmm. um, Matilda grew up in quite uh, a privileged family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mine were, were kind of privileged, not as 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 well off as hers. So mm -hmm. the way we dealt with money, the way we saw money, the way we spent money, mm -hmm. was very different. Matilda's the kind of person who she has, she likes to spend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of person. If I have, I like to see. Okay, plan, save. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not sure we have money for this. Da 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 da. da. So in the beginning, that, that, that caused a little bit of issues because Matilda would spend, where I'd say, hold on, we don't have to spend, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And then we'd start, you know, having to debate and, and had to make compromises, like, like you said. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That, it's that interesting. And then once again, we go to the idea of negotiating, right? It cannot only be the way of one or the way of the other, mm -hmm. right? Even though we don't like to make concessions many times, right? Especially when we are pretty sure we're right, <laughs> but sometimes it's not about being right or being wrong. It's just a matter of showing that you love. Yeah. And this is what I think is one of the most beautiful things about marriage, because it's about you, it's about you letting yourself be influenced to become a better person. Learn like from to, each other. Absolutely right. So this one year and five months, mm -hmm. right? So what would be the balance that you do about the, the learn, time so far and also there are newly wedded couples who are watching us right now yes. and what would be the advice that you would also give to them to succeed in marriage um well we started to budget right mm -hmm. uh, agreed together on a budget and how we're going to spend our money so that was an issue that we another rational decision in, i must say right indeed. we have to bring it in but in in terms of uh, the marriage in general. I say it's it's been a great experience, and I say that because before where I, I'm coming from before, I was I had spent quite a lot of time alone. Okay, I went to university, um, spent four years there, and I was there alone, away from family, etc., etc. And even though I don't mind my own company, but mm -hmm. when I got married, you know, and having my wife around all the time, and you know, being able to share stuff with, and you know. Uh, going to the cinema and doing the things that we do together all of the time. It's, it's nice to have someone to come home to after work who's waiting for you, who's there with you, etc, etc, and ready to listen. And that's one thing I'd say about Natilda as well, she's a really good listener. In terms of advice to newlyweds, I'd say it's, there's always an adapting stage, right, an adapting phase. And I can say we're, we're still adapting even so after a year and five months, but all in all it's good. The benefits of marriage, it, it far outweighs any cons. Mm -hmm. Far outweighs. So I could say if, if there are any couples going through issues or problems that they should just persevere. Right. Persevere, they'll get they'll get to it. And, and communicate with each other because sometimes you, you don't know if maybe because from in my case I was someone who likes to go quiet and I wouldn't say what was wrong and you know, he'd be there, what's wrong? Oh no, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But there are times when you'd have to say what's wrong and you have to open up because when you open up then your partner knows what you're thinking and then both of you can you know work together to, to reach a uh, uh, come on ground, yeah, you would say. Yeah. So communication is very key, I'd say, especially in the beginning because you're getting to know each other and you were dating, that's one thing, but when you're married, it's completely different. So the more you talk, the more you get to know each other and things are just progressing. And if I can say something upon the subject of communication, a lot of the communication is not verbal. Mm. A lot of the communication comes from even body language. You can say the same words, but depending on your demeanor, you can transmit different. a thousand different messages, right? Yeah. Um, and many times what lacks in a communication, which was our case in the beginning, the challenge was that she would expect that I would know. 
he should know. But many times for a man, if he is not told exactly what is to be expected, he's not going to, uh, as we keep saying here on the program, it's not the first time I say this, but you women, they are more intuitive. Men are more, I would say, practical, pragmatic. But when one understands the difference between you know, the man and the woman, the better the, the relationship becomes, okay? I want to thank you both for coming, no, sharing your experience, success to both of you, right, Pleasure. in your marriage, thank okay? You. And to you who are watching, I hope you have enjoyed, I hope what was uh, spoken here, what was said here, has somewhat inspired you. We're going to go to a short break and be right back with more Love Talk Show. Hello, dear viewer. If you are dealing with difficult problems in your relationship, such as fights or healing from a harsh breakup, jealousy, communication issues, or things of the like, come to the Love Therapy this Thursday and every Thursday at 8 p.m. in Finsbury Park, 232 Seven Sisters Road in 4. 3NX. For more information, visit our website, lovetherapy.co.uk. See you here. See you. Welcome back. Now, let's check out a video that I recorded, and I hope that the words I said will somehow inspire you. And after the video, we'll go for a quick break, but stay with us. We still have a lot of interesting things to show you here on the Love Talk Show today. Everything depends on your actions. Use your mind above your emotions. Love intelligently. The biggest difference between success and failure is perseverance. Students give up on education once they fail. Employees quit their job once they have difficulties with their employers. Spouses give up on their relationship once they don't agree with each other and everything turns into a fight. However, do you know that you can work everything out if you have perseverance? Nothing that is good is easy in life. You have to work hard to achieve your dreams. I believe Giving up, it's not something you want to do. Am I right? Success is not automatic in any area of our lives, including in our marriage. You as a couple have the power to choose if you will be happily married or miserable and maybe even get divorced. Everybody dreams of the love of their life, the one that will be with you forever. But for this to be true, the key to a relationship success does not lie in dinners in expensive restaurants or in holidays in luxury resorts. So before getting to the altar, you have to know one thing. In marriage, small things do matter, such as attention. We all need attention. It is in our nature to feel wanted. Having someone paying attention to us can make us feel loved and secure. But when this attention is taken away from us, we might be thinking whether our partner still loves us or not. However, Attention should never be something you have to beg for. Love is about small things. Little things can mean a lot in a relationship, such as giving your partner a compliment, seeing how beautiful she is before going to work, covering up one another with a blanket before going to sleep, cooking together, doing nothing together. Falling asleep on each other's shoulders, sending a random, I miss you, comforting one another, 
watching a movie cuddled up in the bed, having breakfast together, making small surprises, helping one another, recognizing your partner's accomplishments, and expressing gratitude. Sometimes, after the altar, these little things become non-existent. It might sound odd to say this, but no one has marital problems until they do. And you end up asking yourself, I don't know how this happened. We were getting along so well. We don't know what we have. Many times we don't know what we have until it's gone. Until you have no one waiting for you when coming back from work. Until you have no one to say good morning to. Until you have no one to say, I love you too. We lose that person who means so much to us only because we just stopped paying attention to the things that seem so small. When your partner calls you during the day, do you say how happy you are to hear his or her voice? Or do you just say how busy you are and you have more important things to do? When your partner is concerned about something, do you sit by their side and tell them that everything is going to be okay, you will always be there for them? Or do you just not care? When you are at home, sitting on the sofa, watching TV, you just do it by yourself? Or do you say, honey, do you want to watch something with me? Let's choose a series together. So remember this, it doesn't matter how hard it gets or even how much you argue, you are always on the same team. Before or after the altar, keep the small things alive. Don't lose them because those brief moments together are the most important ones in our lives. Never stop investing in your relationship. It won't be good without effort and dedication. Love intelligently. Dear viewer of The Love Talk Show, did you know that you can watch full-length episodes now via our YouTube channel? All you have to do, Anna, is to find The Love Talk Show YouTube channel, subscribe. You're going to find all our episodes there in full length yes. and you can watch for free. You can even copy the link and share with family and friends. But not only that, you also in the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, follow us, like, share and comment. And also don't forget to visit our website, lovetalkshow.tv. There you're going to find even more information that you will not see here on the TV show. And also you can write your questions, send us your questions through the email questions at lovetalkshow.tv. All right, we'd love to hear from you. Let's continue watching Love Talk Show. It's time for our Dear Love Talk. We'll check some questions that you, our viewers, sent to us. If you'd like to do the same, write to us. Let's go for the first one. I am 27 years old and I have been married for six months. And it is so different to date and to be married. Now that I live with her, I'm trying to get used to her manners. She's so bossy at home. She complains about the house organization. She takes such a long time to get ready. I am always late because of her. She does not give me any space and I really need some time by myself. I love her, but it is so hard to live with her under the same roof. So, dear viewer, first of all, um, you've been married for six months, Anna. 
So it's at the very beginning. You're 27 years old. You don't mention here how old she is. I will assume around the same age. So both of you are young, newlyweds. And you're saying here that she's bossy and complaining all the time. Uh, I know you couldn't see all that before you got married. But for sure, some of these traits appeared during the dating period. That's why, Anna, we have to refer to what we said in the beginning, that the dating is the tryout for marriage. Um, it's important that you observe the signs. Because during the dating period, people show the best side of them. Yes. <laughs> they don't show the other side. Yeah, so if in the best like side, when we are really self-conscious about what we're going to say and what we're going to do, some little anger is already appearing. It's because there is anger there. Some, you know, disrespect is appearing. Is because the disrespect is there. So you have to pay attention to these signs. I don't see any uh, red flag raised here like, oh, this is an irreconcilable situation. You are both newlyweds. And you need to sit down and have a, an intelligent approach to, to this situation. To talk what they don't like and... Uh, just come with a conversation. I believe they can adjust. Yeah, but in the end of the day, here is the thing. Uh, even though she may change, she may radically change, but you have to be open to the idea that she's not going to maybe radically change. She can improve a little, but in the end of the day, she will still be the one taking a little bit longer to get ready than you are. Remember, she's a woman. She's not a man. All that you need is, you know... Uh, Three minutes in the shower or less, you know, you pop in your shoes, your trousers, your shirt, you're, you're good to go. She has makeup to do. Her hair is much more complicated, you know, to do than yours probably. So understand, take these things into consideration. You are saying here, or oh, I pinpoint this, she's bossy, she's this, she's that. But remember, you cannot change her. You have to see, what about you? What are the things that you need to improve to make this relationship work, right? So nothing major. Communicate, don't be Should emotional be patient. about this. <laughs> Should be patient. Exert patience and uh, work. Give time also the, the opportunity to, to mold you to into uh, you know being more adaptable to one another, right? The second one is I am married for one year. I knew my husband had problems with alcohol since the beginning, but I overlooked. I thought he could change. I thought I could help him, but I can't. He lost his job, his family and friends. Maybe he'll lose me too. I love him so much, but I'm already thinking about divorce. So uh, yeah, she said here that uh, she overlooked these signs and now she's already in a marriage. But for those that are not, it's very important to look certain signs uh, like this one about alcohol, alcohol, yeah. right? Any addiction, any yeah, form any of addiction. addiction. But now that you are married, you should come together and, and try to help him, talking to him. There is a lot of help out there for people that has this problem. But if you don't come together to try to solve this problem, uh, later on, this problem you destroy this marriage. Yeah, now you're married, right? It's been one year, it's still a newly married, but you see, then again, Anna, we go to what we were saying, the importance of paying attention to signs. You know, you need to be, during the dating period, the dating period is not just about hugs and kisses and going and watching movies and eating together, right? It's not uh, about the physical contact part. Ideally, that part is to be discovered after the marriage. The dating period is a time for the discovery of what's inside that body. What's, what's behind those eyes. What's inside that mind. What's within that heart. This is what has to be discovered. So for instance, Anna, if during a dating period, I'm dating you, right? And all of a sudden the phone rings and I feel that I uh, have to walk away and, and you kind of get suspicious that I'm trying to uh, 
hide, or okay, we can assume automatically it's something negative. Uh, I'm not supposed to be showing everything to you because we are still dating. Remember, it's a, a trial period. Yes. It's not the marriage yet. But it could be an indication that uh, I tend to hide things. Yeah. And if I'm hiding things during the dating period, remember what we just said, mm -hmm. during the dating period is the part of the relationship when people show the best the side best of, of them. themselves. Yeah. Right? So if this is already happening in, in that period, for sure, it's not going to magically disappear during the marriage. It's just going to escalate to worse That's right. problems. Okay, so you need to be uh, more attentive of this. As Anna said here, work now together, support him, help him, right? Now you are a team, all right? Get every form of support that you can get. If you want to get in touch with us, please feel welcome to do so. We would love to help, okay? Now, let us go for the next one here. I am engaged but I don't know if I am ready to get married. I don't want to lose him, but I don't know what to say to him. So first of all, you have to make up your mind. If you are in a relationship engaged already, you are sending, you are transmitting a, a sign uh, to him that you have the intentions to get married. If you're having doubts about it, you need to communicate this immediately. Because, Anna, there has to be honesty, transparency throughout any stage of the relationship. From the first date, throughout the dating period, engagement, marriage, and every single day thereof. There has to be transparency. If I'm having doubts about something and I'm not communicating, at some point, these doubts will uh, lead me to do things that will hurt the relationship, that will hurt the other person, right? Yeah, because marriage is a very important decision and it's not to later on to get divorced. We don't encourage that, right? But then she needs to be sure about this decision. Yeah. Cannot be any doubts there. And if there is doubt, uh, she needs to communicate and see why is the doubt yeah, there. To be honest, uh, you don't mention here why you know, you're having these doubts, why you're not sure um, if you're ready to get married, but what you need to do then immediately, this is the best advice we can give you here, is to communicate it to your uh, partner and talk to him sincerely and openly. What are your doubts? Maybe it's an insecurity issue that your partner can help you with. It's something else. We don't know. But it's important that you are both transparent and as honest as you can be. All right? So the next uh, question is, is there a right age to get married? What do you think, Edward? Well, I think I, I understand where the question is coming from because when we talk about age, you would expect that someone of a certain age would have a certain type of behavior, right? A certain level of maturity, a uh, sense of responsibility, yeah? I understand all that, but it's still very relative, Anna, because there are 20 years old, 20 year olds, I mean, that behave still like they are teenagers, they are 15, and there are those who are even younger than 20, and they are already behaving in a very mature way, you know, they are very responsible. So rather than age by itself, I believe that what is important is the sense of moral character, having moral principles, right? Especially in regards to family connections, um, a sense of responsibility. And maturity. Huh? And a the level of maturity. maturity. If someone is immature, irresponsible, yeah. and with uh, uh, an immoral or, or, or with a doubtful yeah. character. They don't this know person, what to, to what they want in life. They don't have goals. They don't have anything uh, that can lead to a, a marriage, right? Yes. Uh, the, cannot clearly at least have an idea of what they want yeah. to accomplish in life. So these things show that someone is really not ready yeah. for a relationship, let alone for marriage. Okay. So. With this, we hope to have helped you and we have now reached the end of the show. We hope 
you had a great time like we did, right? Yes, we really did. Did you have a great time? Yes, I did. We too. And uh, we hope to have helped you somehow. And we'll be back next Saturday with another Love Talk show. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you. We will like you. Uh, 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 uh. And we... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Quick bake. <laughs> Quick bake. We're Let's bake. bake okay? <laughs> and now we need to go to a break. And we, I said the same thing again. Okay. <laughs> This program is brought to you by UCKG.